All right. Yeah, okay. Hi, hi everybody, welcome. Um, today we are going to be talking about EC multi-tenancy uh, Kubernetes Reaper Main Storage with Cloud Provider OpenStack and Manila CSI. Uh, my name is Victoria Martinez de la Cruz. I'm here today with me. I'm Tom Barron. I worked with Victoria. <laughs> I was the uh, Manila PTL the last three cycles, but not anymore. Got the miss. <laughs> All right. So, um, what are we going to be talking today? We have a really uh, short amount of time, and, and this was intended for a full presentation. So, we have a lot of content, but we are going to try to fit this in 10 minutes, uh, or a bit more, maybe. Um, so, today we are going to be covering what is Manila CSI. Um, then we are going to do a quick overview on, well, why we actually need reward many uh, for Kubernetes with Manila CSI. Uh, then we are going to go directly to show a demo uh, of how are you going to deploy Manila CSI. Um, and finally, we are going to be covering the use case for the application developer side. So basically, it's how you are going to be using Manila CSI as the well, user, actually. Finally, we are going to leave a link uh, with summary and resources you can use if you are interested in this topic. Uh, so you can check it out later. Uh, all the slides are, you have a lot of content, but the idea is for you to actually have some sort of resource if you need to check it out. All right, so uh, first of all, uh, what is the Manila CSI plugin? First, I hope you are familiar with, the Mani with what Manila is. Uh, if not, just the quick basic introduction is that Manila is the shared file system as a service uh, project for OpenStack. Um, and CSI basically is uh, the solution we have, the standard solution we have if you need to have persistent storage for you in Kubernetes. Um, the actual uh, definition for this would be is external dynamic provisioner plugin for persistent Kubernetes volumes uh, serve up in true OpenStack vanilla. Um, a good thing about this, because there are several implementations, but CSI is a standard, and the great thing about it to be a standard is that basically you can use it with any uh, container orchestrator, it's not only Kubernetes. Um, but still, this code lives in the Kubernetes Cloud Provider Open Source Repository. So, a bit of um, motivation on why we should be using uh, the Cloud Provider Open Source plugin with Manila instead with a maybe implementation for a vendor specific or backend specific um, storage. And basically, is uh, the our main reason would be is you know Manila has support not only uh, for one storage but also uh, for nearly 35 different storage backends. Uh, basically, you can use this a single um, abstraction layer to interact with any storage you might have. And this is pretty convenient. This is flexible. So uh, this is uh, a good reason for you to be using Manila um, on Kubernetes. Also, uh, a really important point is that uh, in OpenStack, we have multi-tenancy. And basically, you are getting this for free. Uh, in Kubernetes, something that basically you don't have right now in Kubernetes and it's not nearly to be done in the short place. So if you are looking to have a deployment with multi-tenancy, this is your, to, your way to go. <coughs> okay, so uh, why use Manila instead of other solutions in OpenStack, for instance, like Cinder? Uh, we have a plugin for Cinder, um, but the thing is that it's read write only. Thank you. Uh, and in Manila, you are getting read write many, so there are different use cases. It's like if your use case actually requires this capability, then Manila is your way to go. Uh, in Cinder, it's a different use case, but well, it depends on what we, you want to do. And um, well, what do, why would you want to use the storage in Kubernetes? Basically, well, it's easy to scale. Uh, and basically manage any application you might have that would need persistent storage. Um, all right, so. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see a quick overview of how this demo is going to be look like. Uh, how is the, the topology that we are going to be presenting in, in uh, for here? So basically, you have uh, OpenStack deployment, like a minimal one with Manila. Um, Manila is not on the data path, it's in the control path. 
Um, you will have different tenants uh, for with your Kubernetes cluster. Here you have cluster A and cluster V. And uh, here we depict uh, an scenario in which you would have two different storage possibilities. So for instance, a vendor storage and on the other side, uh, Ceph uh, with NFS Ganesha gateway in front of it. And uh, basically you can uh, interact with Manila to provide the share and just get the share directly attached to your uh, pod and that in a simple scenario uh, that, well, we are going to show. And I will allow uh, Tom to actually perform the demo. Sure. Um, so what we want to show first is what a Kubernetes uh, cloud administrator needs to do to work with um, uh, Manila CSI. So um, a cloud administrator um, is um, The um, Kubernetes administ oh yeah, I'm sorry, this is right, thank you. Um, so the administrator um, is an OpenStack user. It has an ordinary OpenStack user rights. Um, for the administrator the, um, does not need administrative privileges in OpenStack itself. Okay, so we showed a picture with uh, Kubernetes Cloud A and Kubernetes Cloud B, and they're each separate OpenStack tenants. Um, and our ships in the night to each other as they interact with OpenStack. So um, in the Manila CSI provisioner, um, the Kubernetes administrator works with a bunch of YAML files to install the plugins that are required. So we're showing here an example where they're using an NFS partner plugin to just do the mount. Nothing else in the in a NFS um, CSI is used. Similarly, you could use, say, CephFS uh, native um, provisioner to do the CEPFS mount. Um, and then uh, the controller part is, uh, um, is run as a stateful set with replication uh, one, um, so that you only have one, one of them running at a time that's in charge of orchestrating the, uh, the actual stuff. It interacts with Manila and the control plane to get provisioning done. Uh, and then there are node provisioners. Um, um, which do the actual mounting from the Manila standpoint um, and interact with the um, interact with the protocol helper. So um, all of that is canned. Okay, it's just the same. It's boilerplate. It's the same for every kind of deployment, except which protocol you're going to use to hook up with. What you have to do though is set up local secrets with your normal credentials and the um, uh, code to do. There's a script to do that. Uh, in, in the code that was present, provided with the Manila CSI provisioner. And then you have to define storage classes. Kubernetes users refer to storage classes when they do pr uh, persistent volume claims. The storage class concept is abstractly a whole lot like uh, the Manila concept of a share type. And indeed, you map this in the, when you do the storage class definition, you not only say how big you want it, I need two terabytes or whatever, but you say um, what Manila um, storage, storage type, uh, share type, matches the storage class. Um, so you might have a Manila share type called gold or something, and it will get mapped there in your storage class. So um, this is something that's done one time. There's a Helm chart to do a lot of this now that's in here. We're not using it in here. And then downstream, uh, for instance, in our distribution with OpenShift, we intend to write an operator that will wrap all this up and just make can it. It's still pretty easy even like this. Um, next slide, please. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so um, I think these points I've made, basically. We're going to do a little screencast that shows you what the administrator does to set it up with these manifests. Thank you. Okay, here we are. Um, let's play. Okay, we have a uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's running 1.15.1. Um, I can't type, so you get to see me type and retype. Uh, we have a master node and three worker nodes. Here are the manifests that I just saw earlier that I just had on the slide. 
um, for example, the secrets file. Looks like that. A script produced it from your OpenStack credentials. Um, here's the storage class that's defined at the moment here. Um, I will, um, you can see here, um, the storage class has a name. It's using the Manila provisioner. Um, and um, has a Manila share type. So the, you, the Kubernetes administrator needs to talk to the OpenStack administrator at some level and say, what share types do you have out there? Just like any other user that wants to use share types, they have to know which types they are. The Kubernetes administrator is the guy who does that in this case. Um, right now, you can see we don't really have much going on in the Kubernetes cluster, the bare bones one. We're going to create, we're going to use these manifests. And we'll see if they them start running in a while. Um, actually, the way I sorted those, they start running right away. Um, so um, it's fast and easy. The hardest part is typing kubectl right without inverting the letters. Um, and you can see that there are a bunch of pods here running with these different parts of the Manila CSI plugin. And what else did I show here? Oh, there are no persistent volume claims made yet. There are no persistent volumes made yet. We didn't create any manually ahead of time and the per dynamic creation of them by, um, by persistent volume claims hasn't happened because we're just the administrator setting things up for ordinary users who are going to use do this. Um, Manila also on the back end didn't have any shares corresponding to that. Um, we can go, go on now. Um, let's move on to the next slide. Thank you, Victoria. Okay. And what I want to show you is that's something this one time administrator does for it over in Kubernetes cluster A. Over in Kubernetes cluster B, the administrator did something similar. They don't know about each other. They're running on OpenStack and getting OpenStack storage, right? Now, how does an actual user, who's typically a developer or a DevOps person, uh, interact with this now? So, an application developer using Manila CSI can get RWX storage. RWX is the Kubernetes uh, jargon for read write anywhere, which is, just means essentially that I can have applications running in pods that are writing um, concurrently to the same persistent volume safely. Okay? And, the jargon is RWX versus RWO or the various read-only modes. Um, so, uh, as Victoria mentioned earlier, uh, Sender, for instance, will give you RWO mode but not RWX, at least when you're using file. There's a new raw black block thing we're not talking about right now. Um, where you um, so, the idea is an application developer ought to be able to define their application in a pod and they ought to be able to find persistent volume claims and use that in a cloud native uh, area of running on, on Alibaba or Azure or uh, AWS or something like that and then move the same application over into an on-premises OpenStack environment and run the same thing. They're gonna have to change the names of their storage classes but otherwise they ought to be able to run. And the reason they have, need to change the names of the storage classes is not because they're moving from Alibaba or AWS to um, an OpenStack-based thing. Just because they're moving to a different administrator, people name things differently. They might use their own native language, for instance, as the names of them. So you've got to be able to refer to the storage classes that have been defined by the administrator. Okay, let's move along now. <laughs> um, so I made a bare-bones, simple, multi-writer application. So if you look at the red part, this is an a, a simple, dumb application writing, uh, running in a pod. The application um, echoes the date into a path, slash MNT path, and it's using the host name of the, of the node um, uh, here. 
host name here, uh, host name here ends up uh, different. I, I have two of these, writer one and writer two. The only difference is the name, and the name shows up in the host name. So that means you can write into a different spot in the file system using the same application. We're mounting this uh, through a PVC, and the claim name is my claim. We can look at this will all be online. I'm going to run through it quickly because I'm running out of time, but you can see how it works later. Um, now, um, we have, we have a, that my claim shows up in a PVC, and the PVC is read write only, I mean, read write many, um, 10 gig, and um, it referred to a storage class that the administrator created. Okay? We'll go run through this uh, quickly in a screencast. Again, you can see this, uh, we're running out of time, but it'll all be here, and our contact information's at the front, so if you need to ask us questions, feel free. So we don't have any PVCs yet. The administrator just set things up. User hasn't done anything. That's the PVC we're going to use. It's the one I showed on the slide. We create, we create a, uh, we create that persistent volume claim. And now, if we look, there is a persistent volume claim where that was blank before. And there was a persistent volume fulfilling it. And uh, once we get the credentials right, we'll see that there's a Manila uh, share. Uh, corresponding to it. Now, I'm cheating a little way in running Manila commands here of doing it for, for the sake of showing it to you. The end user of the Kubernetes cloud isn't going to know anything about Manila. They don't need to know anything about OpenStack. Just you can see on the back end, that's how it's getting fulfilled. As I showed you in the slides, I've got an application, same one we put on the slides. There are two versions of it that differ only in the name that shows up. We run each of them. Look at the result. Come on, can you type tester? All right, so what we're here, here what we're doing, um, might be running off the screen here. Basically, um, they're both running. And they're running, you'll see it if you run this on, on your native, and you'll see they're running on different worker nodes. So they're distributed out over the cluster. Now what we can do is um, run a command in the, in the pod called writer1. Um, and we're just listing the, the file tree under the mount point. All I'm showing you here is you, get the, you see the same thing from both pods that are running on different worker nodes, right? And not only can you see the same thing, you can look at the file that's being written by the other pod. On this, on, you know, on writer one, you can see what writer two is writing. And on writer two, you can see what writer one is writing. So these guys not know, have seen this a million times in, in Manila, uh, you know, with, uh, re, with, without calling, without the container context. And we're doing it with the container context. Um, so um, you can also see in here that um, that the files are both both show up in both places, and you can see that they're up top. That mount with the it's running off the screen here, uh, 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 but it's mounted in both places in, inside both pods. Uh, so those kube tuttle uh, exec commands are running in both pods. So this will be posted, the slides will be posted, the screencasts will be available, the manifests will be downloadable when you come back after this, you know, in a week or two when the um, conference is all settles. Uh, so you can follow up on the details of that stuff at that point. Um, I have another, I'm going to skip it right now. You can obviously do read write on, once as well. The demo and screencast show you trying to run the same apps. The first one comes up fine, the second one blocks. That's what you would get with Sender, et cetera, uh, with the Sender CSI plugin with this kind of application. 
So summing up, um, with Manila CSI, you get read, write, anywhere access from any nodes in your, in your um, Kubernetes cluster. You can run multiple clusters on OpenStack that don't know anything about each other, but that are still using common OpenStack uh, um, elast elastically available large scale storage behind it that's available to all of OpenStack. You can run multiple backends. I can run Ceph plus NetApp plus, I don't know, Inspur, you know, et cetera, and I can put them all in there or I can pick and choose among them as the OpenStack administrator and nobody has to know anything about it who's using Kubernetes. Um, so um, that's basically it. The slides cover some more stuff like futures that are developing with uh, Kubernetes and so on. Um, I think that about wraps it up. We'll be around if you have questions and stuff. This is a lightning talk and we're already running over our time. So thank you for letting us do that.